Chapter 10. Case Studies. Making it real. In the case studies that follow, you'll be introduced to people just like you who took time out of their busy lives to create a new future. Every day they define themselves by a vision of this future instead of by the memories of their past. You could say they were more in love with their future than they were with their past. The act of doing the work daily and turning the practices in the last three chapters into a skill led them to become more supernatural. Pay attention to how simple they made it. Tim gets the key to his future. At an advanced workshop in Seattle, which typically coincides with Halloween, we ask our students to dress up as their future selves on the first night. Tim dressed up as a supernatural swami. He had always wanted to be a swami, subscribed to the lifestyle, and at a young age, had left his hometown in Connecticut to study in an ashram. At the start of the event, participants also received a gift from our company, a key to symbolize unlocking the potential of each participant's future self. Tim had attended several advanced level workshops in the past. The first time he made a mind movie, he inserted a picture of gold and silver coins in one of his scenes. For years, he had been trying to surrender the emotion of fear, but at a certain point he realized that behind the fear was unworthiness. So for Tim, the coins were a symbol of worthiness. Everybody wants wealth he told me, but because I was on the spiritual path into yoga and everything else that goes with it, I had the mentality that I had to be poor and embrace poverty to truly walk the talk. So instead of the gold and silver coins merely representing wealth, they represented being worthy to receive. For Tim's Seattle mind movie, he added more images to evolve his vision. As another symbol for worthiness, Tim used a Chinese character that meant wealth, but because he never desired money, below the symbol he placed the word affluence. He preferred affluence because when he looked up the word's definition, he found that its Latin root meant to flow toward. Wouldn't it be great, he thought, if everything I wanted flowed toward me? Although Tim is very analytical, after continuously watching his mind movie in tandem with the kaleidoscope, he found he could quickly bypass the analytical mind and get into the subconscious mind, the operating system, to program his future. During the workshop, when it came time to dimensionalize a scene in his mind movie, he had a profound experience. He started to feel joy, and then a wildly enthusiastic love for life, almost like a burning sensation in his heart. He said he felt as if he could set the world on fire. Then during the meditation, I told the students it was time to open up and receive, and that's when Tim says energy began to enter his body. I don't know where it came from, he told me but it was like someone had turned on a spigot. I shot straight up. The energy came in through the top of my head and then moved out through my hands. My palms were face down, yet without conscious control, the energy caused them to lift and turn over. I lost track of time and space and had no idea where I was, but for the rest of the meditation, I was in an ecstatic, exalted state. I knew somehow that everything was going to be different and that I was no longer the same person. When the energy downloaded into Tim, he believed it was carrying a message of worthiness because he was never the same afterward. I'm convinced that the new information that came into my body rewrote my DNA, erasing the old self, because that part of my personality is now gone, he says. When Tim got home to Phoenix, where he owned and operated a futon shop, he returned to business as usual on Monday morning. On Thursday, a woman who had purchased a futon from him several years earlier came into his shop. Since the day she purchased the futon, they had formed a friendship, and every few weeks she would stop by to chat. She was now retired and came into the shop to tell Tim she had just finished making out her will. She wanted Tim to be her executor. Tim felt honoured, and he thanked her. Here it is, she said, placing it on the counter along with a key. Read it. Tim began scanning the document to discover that not only was he the executor, she was also bequeathing him $110,000 worth of gold and silver coins. The key she placed on the counter was the key to her safe deposit box, where she kept the coins, which of course matched the picture in Tim's mind movie. In an instant, Tim remembered the similar key to his future he had received at the advanced workshop in Seattle. Now that's being worth it. Sarah can't touch the ground. On Labor Day 2016, Sarah severely injured her back attempting to prevent a five-ton boat from crashing into a dock. 
For seven weeks, she was in agony, and she endured physical therapy, took a cocktail of medications, and made countless visits to the chiropractor. After nothing else helped, the doctor scheduled Sarah for surgery, but first she decided to attend an advanced workshop in Cancun. Because of how much pain Sarah was in, her son suggested she bring a wheelchair. She decided not to, and when she arrived at the hotel, she collapsed on the floor in pain. Later, when she got into the pool on a float, she had severe spasms when she attempted to get out. Sarah was not new to my work, so she came to Cancun with her meditation cushion and her mind movie. In her mind movie, she was healthy, strong, and able to run again. She could play basketball with her son and lacrosse with her daughter. Every time Sarah saw herself in the scene performing aerial yoga, she embraced the joy she knew she would feel if she could actually do it, and when she heard the song from her mind movie, her energy rose. During the first few days when she was tightening her core muscles and drawing energy up her spine with the breathing technique, she felt her sciatic nerve pulsating. It was as if a warm electric current was traveling up the nerve. At the same time, she had the intention that the energy was a healing light ascending her spinal column. On the third day, she started her morning by searching the internet until she found an image of a woman doing aerial yoga. She carried that image in her mind all day. That afternoon, our students were working with the kaleidoscope and their mind movies. After they unfolded into the quantum field, I then asked them to dimensionalize a scene from their mind movie. When the meditation was finished, I instructed them to lie down on the floor. But as Sarah told me later, she couldn't find the floor. She kept reaching lower and lower, searching for it but it was no longer there. The next thing she knew, she was in another dimension, having a full-on, IMAX-like sensory experience, but without her senses. She was living a future scene of her mind movie. Enough circuits in her brain had turned on to make her internal experience as real as any external experience she had ever had. She was not visualizing this scene, she was in it, living it. I realized I was in another reality, a different time and space. I was in my future, she explained, and I was actually performing aerial yoga. I was hanging upside down, and the floor wasn't there. I kept reaching for it, but I was just swinging upside down from this beautiful red silk scarf. I felt freedom from my pain. I was swinging freely in space. Eventually she did lie down, with tears of joy flowing down her cheeks. When she came out of that meditation, all of her pain was gone. I knew I was healed, she said. I was in awe of the power of my mind, and I felt tremendous gratitude. I continue to manifest things from my mind movie. In fact, my mind movie can't even keep up with my life. Terry walks into a new future. In September 2016, while practicing her walking meditation along Australia's beautiful Sunshine Coast, Terry had a profound experience. Toward the end of her meditation, when she stopped for the final part, she was feeling connected, uplifted, and expansive. As she followed my instructions, she opened herself up to the field with the intention of being worthy of her future life. With no warning, she felt an electric charge enter her body through the crown of her head, where it continued to flow down into her heart. As the energy coursed through the rest of her body, surging through her thighs and down into her feet, her legs began shaking uncontrollably. The only way I can describe it is that there was an intense shaking from the inside, she told me. But it was a voltage of energy that my body had never experienced. I thought I was going to fall over. It was at that point I lost all conscious control over my lower body. She burst into uncontrollable tears, and with that release, her mind and body also began to let go. Time appeared to stand still. Terry understood that her body was surrendering a lifetime of past unresolved emotions. As the surge of electricity continued to move through her, she felt huge amounts of dense, dark matter falling away from her body. I believe this matter was trauma, not only from my lifetime, but also past lifetimes, she remembered. It included the trauma of my father nearly dying from a suicide attempt when I was eight, which has cast a shadow over my life by preventing me from allowing myself to receive unconditional love. She felt all her limiting beliefs, many of which she had acquired through deep emotional conditioning, and the unconscious beliefs of others, simply dissolve. Everything that was not in alignment with who I really am just fell away, Terry said. I experienced true liberation, something my soul has been yearning for for a very long time. I knew in that moment that my soul had guided me to that very beach, at that very moment, 
with all these people to do this important work. She fell to her knees, an overwhelming amount of love flowing through her. Kneeling in the sand, humbled by this power, she saw that every choice she had made up to that point was necessary for her to arrive at this poignant moment. In that instant, she observed who she had been for the last year, consistently choosing to do the meditations every day, all the while falling in love with herself. She knew that her future self in that moment was calling her past self to have this experience of profound love. When Terry came back to the three-dimensional reality of her senses, she felt an overwhelming sense of peace and oneness with everything around her. She reported a deep reconnection to her physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual self, and said she felt more like herself than she had in a very long time. This experience reminded me that I am, as we all are, an aspect of divine energy, she said, and that I am worthy of receiving it.